her hands so orange. Look at this. My hands are really orange. Everybody's like, oh, what is that? What's wrong with the, what's wrong with your hands? Well, I drink this every day, right? Carrot. <laughs> so don't, don't do any bad. It's just that it looks a little weird. It's, it's orange and uh, my eyes, perfect. My eyes, I mean, other than. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kim, America's Holistic Foot Doctor. Welcome back to Holistic Diabetic Foot Ulcers Cure Series. On the last videos, we talked about your, my morning rev up rituals to start my day. They were, as you can see, detoxing um, to goggle my mouth and flush my nose and then clean my ears and then exercise, my stretching and strengthening exercise, and then stomach waking supplements such as apple cider vinegar and restore, and then spiritually to ground myself for the rest of the day, and then intermittent fasting to think about it and try not to eat uh, a little bit, uh, not too early in the morning and then not too late in the evening, and then that's intermittent fasting, and also taking my morning supplements and morning herbs to re really rev up my energy, uh, have my better control of my sugar, and that's the first thing I do. And then I take my breakfast, my uh, protein shake with all kinds of great herbs, also uh, energy boosting herbs, and also uh, controlling my sugar herbs. Uh, and then um, I, I have my breakfast uh, along with that. And then I really uh, have a final touch of some coffee to kind of boost my quick energy right there with some chestnut to have a little bit longer lasting energy level and get myself ready to start the day. Now let's talk about the daytime. Now I revved up my energy to bring it up as high as I could. Now from here I need to maintain this energy when I bring it up. So there are a lot of things that I have to do to make that happen. To have the most energy during the day, why? Because I want to have the deepest sleep and deepest rest that night. So what do I do first thing in the morning? Well, there's some concept of increasing uh, more activities so that uh, you would increase your energy level. And it's called increasing the water. We don't want to drink too late at nighttime, uh, but uh, as soon as the first thing in the morning, uh, you have access to your bathroom, we want to drink as much as possible. But we talked about not drinking during your meal, very important, right? Not drinking not too late at night for the sleep as well. So uh, we do that and increasing the food. I have to eat as much as I can in the shortest window possible, remember the feeding window or eating window, and I do that, and then increase exercise. Exercise we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, all the studies show that exercise has to be done at a certain time. We don't want to do it too late. Uh, some people like it in the morning, which is fine, you're different. I'm not a morning person, so I don't want to exercise in the morning. I'm, I'm really groggy and not feeling too well. Some people love it in the morning, so that's up to you, but you don't want to, one thing for sure is you don't want to do it too late for sure, okay? That's exercise. And the light. You need to be under the light, not talking about inside light. We have to get outside, get some sun, get some blue light. That would really rev up your energy as well. Now we talk about the mitochondria. What is the mitochondria? Mitochondria, it looks like a little amoeba. You know, it looks like a little, uh, actually, uh, it looks like a little uh, bacteria. It looks like it. It's in your cells, about 500 to 1,000 uh, in every cell to make energy. We call them ATP. Uh, from sugar, and it goes through, I don't know if you remember the chemistry, <laughs> it's, it's called Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, and the sugar gets into this whole cycle and then it produces ATP. ATP is the unit of energy. Without ATP, you cannot think, you cannot move, you have no energy, you're fatigued out. So mitochondria is very important to have more number you can increase the number of the mitochondria in your cells and then also the size of mitochondria by doing these activities. Exercise is number one way to do it. When you exercise, it increases demand of your ATP, so your body has to make more uh, ATP, so it increases size and number, especially your heart and really uh, vital organs require more mitochondria, so you're going to increase those. The light, when you have more sunlight, uh, it increased that as well. And when you do intermittent fasting, we talked about you know, increasing um, you know, your fasting window. When you uh, fast more, actually it increased the number and the size of mitochondria as well. So our job is during the day, really do a lot of activities, get out in the sun, get, get more you know, good air and all that movement. That would increase the size and number of mitochondria 
that in turn will give you highest amount of energy during the day. So it is very important to stay active, move around, don't sit around on your desk. If you are sitting on your desk, you have to get up and walk around every 15 to 30 minutes. Well, that's too, too often, but at least every hour you need to get around, go to the restroom, walk around. Don't waste time talking to other people though. <laughs> Just get back to work, but you need to get, get up and move around because that's really gonna help you increase the size and the number of your mitochondria. We're about halfway through my daytime energy building rituals. If you've enjoyed this video so far and learned something new, leave the word daytime rituals in the comments below. If you'd like me to elaborate and go deeper into a specific topic, please write and tell me more about blank, such as high intensity interval training or adaptogenic herbs. I will soon make a video on that topic for you. Be sure to also give this video a thumbs up. Continuing on my daytime energy building rituals, next thing I would do is to give a really good snack in between meals. You want to keep the energy up. You don't want to crash and then try to bring it back up. It's a lot of work. So we're trying to rev up the uh, uh, energy level and you, got, you need to stay up there as much as possible. To do so, you need a little snack to kind of keep your energy up. So this is what I do for snack. I take another protein shake, the same one with the pea protein and all the energy building and sugar managing uh, herbs. Uh, I take that again about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Uh, I take a break. And then uh, as soon as I'm done with the patient about 12, 30, 1 o'clock, before the meal, I take another snack. with the, I call it the paleo bar. It's got no grains, but it's got a lot of seeds and um, it's got a lot of good uh, protein uh, on there. And that's what I take with the sunchoke tea. Now sunchoke is not very well known, but it's one of the most powerful way to improve your gut health, which in turn can really help your diabetes condition, okay? And sunchoke is also called Jerusalem artichoke, and it looks like a, uh, like a, like a garlic. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it looks like a, uh, like a potato. Uh, but it's, it's a root vegetable and it's really, really good. I have a tea of it and I drink that and drink that throughout the day actually, uh, whenever I'm uh, thirsty and it's really good for your uh, managing your diabetes and controlling your sugar level as well. Next one is my lunch. My lunch, I take a little bit later because I have to finish all the patients and all the paperwork, but lunch is a very important rule of 80-20 rule. Now, I don't want to I do a whole business seminar on 80-20 rules, so I'm not into the business seminar today, but it also applies to how you look at your plate. When you look at your plate, your 80% of the, when you look, at, look down at it, it has to be green salad of some kind, okay? And then the other 20 could be whatever you want. You can have a little bit of you know, sugar if you want, a uh, little, bit, little bit of it, and then have um, some kind of meat if you want. And so I, I, like, I like pork, I like beef, I like, I like all meat. I'm, I'm, I'm Korean and I'm, we love barbecue, right? So we eat a lot of meat too. But you have to make sure that you have plenty of green vegetable to it's kind of wash it away from your colon. We talked about your colon being about 20 feet long, right? It has to go through all of that. If you've got a hard food down there, something needs to move it down there. So you need uh, the bulk. I call it the green vegetables. You need a lot of that. Make sure if you're just getting some plate, get extra plate of uh, salad to eat it with because that's gonna move all your food down so that it, you won't have any constipation problems. Next one is the daytime supplements. I know I've already taken a lot of uh, morning supplements, but here's the daytime supplement. I take multi-minerals. Um, I'm not really selling you any product, but um, there's this uh, company called Standard Process, probably best, uh, one of the best uh, uh, mineral and vitamin uh, company in the world and I order some of their products. It's very natural and um, literally they literally crumble. If you get the tablet literally you can just crush it. That's how I, they don't use any kind of chemicals. It's really good product. I, I take mineral supplements. I take um, uh, 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 vitamin minerals and then Simplex F is a hormone supplement. It's a precursor of the uh, a male hormone, so it's really good uh, product as well. I take my omega-3. Orchex also, it's a prostate health. It helps um, uh, for that as well. And also take immune pack, especially with all the viruses going around at this time. I take vitamin C and D, which is really crucial for your immune system. And I also take zinc and quercetin. We talked about quercetin earlier, how it opens up your cell wall, so zinc can get in. So these are the supplements that I take to make sure my immune system is strong enough to be able to handle uh, all the people coming in and out of the office. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, 35, 40 patients a day and I'm, I'm you know, greeting them, I'm talking to them a lot. So it's very important to keep my immune system up 
to make sure I can fight all the things that are coming to me. And then juicing. Juicing probably one of the most important thing that I can show you what I do that really keeps me in line is I do two different kinds of juicing. One is green vegetable juicing and one is root vegetable juicing. And they, do, they have different kinds of vitamins and minerals and different things. But at the end of the day, when you eat this, you, you, all that hydration, all that uh, water, it's the purest form of uh, water because your plants uh, sucked it up from the ground. So it's, 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 it's really good minerals and, and, and water. And then when you squeeze that, drink it, it's, it's, the, it's the best water you can ever drink. So, uh, you know, cucumber, kale, celery, parsley, lemon, and spinach, amazing stuff, right? And then root vegetables, uh, carrot, and ginger, and all the other things are also mixed in as well. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, your hand's so orange. Look at this. My hands are really orange. Everybody's like, oh, what is that? What's wrong with, the, what's wrong with your hands? Well. I drink this every day, right? Carrot. <laughs> so doesn't doesn't do any bad. It's just that it looks a little weird. It's it's orange, and uh, my eyes perfect. My eyes, I mean, other than you know being old eyes, I, I I need glasses to look at stuff. But I can see really far away. My eyes are perfect. So uh, that's from vitamin A uh, of carrot. So I highly recommend these kind of juicing to energize you, hydrate you all day long because I told you before that I hate drinking water. So for me, I need to have something with it. So juicing is excellent way to do it. I juice a lot more during uh, the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Why? Because I'm, you know, I, I have control of my bathroom you know, nearby so I can drink a lot more. So I drink a whole lot more. I just drink a little bit, one, one bottle of this and one bottle of that uh, during the week and I drink four bottles of those uh, during the weekend. Exercise. Now, all the studies show the best time to exercise is from 2 to 7. Okay? Well, like I said, some people like to exercise in the morning, but science shows that this is the best time to exercise for your body. And I can go on details about that. That's not the part of this uh, uh, video series, but uh, the exercise, these are the things that I do. I already told you some of the things that I do in the morning. Some of them are kind of repeat of what I do. I use a lot of resistance exercise. We talked about how to control your diabetes, number one ways to do it is to exercise and build muscles. It's very important when you do a resistance exercise with the bands, I think I told you about the bands, how you restrict the uh, uh, kind of uh, blood coming back up and it makes all the blood kind of stay down there. That increase your growth hormone level and increase your energy at the same time and it makes your, uh, uh, the muscles build faster. So I do the resistance exercise at least three to four times a week. And then uh, when I do it, I vary the speed. It's called high, uh, interval, in, um, high, high intensity interval training. That means I, I go really fast sometimes and then I go slow down and I go really fast and then slow down. When you do that, it, it really burns your calorie a lot more and makes your uh, uh, muscle build so much faster. So it's called HIIT. It's a very effective way to vary your exercise. Don't do the same thing all the time because your body gets used to it, right? And then stretching, I told you about stretching, so I do the stretching that I do in the morning, I do it when I'm uh, exercising as well. And also inversion table, as much as I can, I go upside down all the time to make sure that my, my spine is all stretched out. And also room and bench, I told you about the strengthening your back as well. I do a lot of squats as well, but the room and bench is really, really great stretching and it feels really, really good. So that's what I do three to four times a week. I've lost some weight, uh, so these days I'm trying to gain some weight. I know some of you are saying, why are you trying to do that? But uh, the only time for me, I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm ectomorph. I'm a skinny person to begin with. So for me to really gain weight, I have to do a lot of weight training. I have to, I have to eat a lot to gain weight. So that's, that's kind of what I have to do. I, I've been doing a lot more exercise lately. And then I take my adaptogenic herbs, uh, which are uh, rhodiola, rosea. We talked about that. Ashwagandha. It increased uh, your energy level, also manage your sugar better and insulin as well. Reishi, mushroom, cloves, alfalfa, curcumin, gotu cola. A lot of these herbs sound familiar now, right? I've been talking about this, but all of these really uh, allows you to give you more energy, makes you adapt to a lot of stress that are coming to you, and also manage your sugar and your insulin level very well, all of these. And you can see all the seed oil. So grape seed oil is an excellent way to cook with it. Pumpkin seed oil, celery seed oil, excellent antioxidants, uh, manage your sugar a lot better. So these are the herbs that I take every day to make sure that I can handle all the stress that's coming to, to me on a daily basis. If you'd like to receive my daily One Minute Wellness messages, then please sign up at 1mwellness.com. 
Remember, it only takes one minute to read. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.